So obviously the game that we're going to be looking at today, and I mostly just wanted to do this at, because I wanted to have a look. I've been quite busy recently. I haven't been able to watch a ton of the qualifiers. So now we have this situation. So the, even this roster that we're about to look at isn't even the G2 roster anymore because they brought Kellogg's back in and like kicked Mixwell out or something like that. Like, I can't fucking keep up with what G2 are doing with their rosters at the moment, because there was the whole thing that they did with their League of Legends roster, where, like, like Carlos basically got rid of everyone. Like, all the support staff, basically all the players, like, completely gutted the team. So I have no idea what's going on with G2. But either way, people had high hopes, and quite rightly, for this team coming into this year. Um, they had a pretty good run in Stage 3 of VCT, and they just totally shat the bed. They got like completely first rounded. So this is the second game they no, sorry, this is the first game they played in the close quals. They lost to Vitality, which is what we're about to watch, and after that they played against the Lions and they also lost. And if I remember correctly, both of them were 0 and 2 score lines. Also, this is going to be like my first VOD review of this season/year, slash year, so I kind of just want to get back into the swing of it. I guess I haven't watched the ban phase or whatever. It's going to be on Valor GG, which is actually where I got the game from. So, oh, it doesn't actually have the bans listed. That's unfortunate. I don't know who picked which map. I just want to have a look at who it is that actually playing. Um, oh, they don't quite have... Uh, oh my god, my eyelash is annoying the fuck out of me. They don't quite have matching mirror compositions because we've got um a sage on this side and an astra on this side i'm kind of a fan of the astra okay i'm i'm gonna put this out there i'm an astra fan anyway and obviously the thing you have to remember about fracture is it has all of these narrow pathways these narrow walkways you want to be looking for those kinds of uh agents who can very easily cut those off so with her stars great also i'm a huge fan of breach on this map, I love Breach anyway. Breach Haven, Breach Split, fucking Breach Fracture, give me Breach. Obviously that Viper's Wall is gonna like push all of these attackers down towards A. Now this is kind of being like, you've only got one person who's watching onto this angle. And Shadow's trying to clear out the site itself, so they just wanna rush straight in, which kind of makes sense, it's an eco. But this is the thing here, right? It's like, you have this one player. You have this one player here, uh who's watching onto the angle i never fucking remember the call outs for this map but coming down from dish right watching onto this angle up onto the the higher ledge because um down here astra was actually doing like a flank watch so she wasn't actually watching onto the site itself which is an interesting thing in my opinion because over here where you've got they put a viper a defensive vipers wall up to stop people coming down onto the b side or at least to make it harder now the idea then, especially on an eco, you're probably not going to like push through that kind of thing. So, okay, you're sending them down towards A. You should really be expecting them to come from there. Um, now I understand having a flank watch. I think this is a good position. You can still have the flank watch while also watching this angle. But because you only had this one person and their line of sight has been immediately cut off, that is such an easy way for Vitality to engage directly onto the site especially as they knew that they'd cleared the A site, there was no one there, but they'd cleared the A site using the breach utility uh, straight away. They used that aftershock immediately. Just uh, just an eco and you wanna be going for like quite aggressive pushes, but I think that's why it sort of confuses me a little bit that they didn't keep as many eyes as they could. Because now you've got G2 who are pushed way further up, uh, like closer to the site, right? And they're all stacking up ready for the vitality players they want to kind of swarm them but i feel like prevention is always better than cure and great here so like this exact angle which is what the astro was trying to hold in the first place actually just gets held by cadavra now uh, they cleared them great couple of last shots from brahms there he also wasn't touched that much so for most of the round he was just chilling out up here and they knew he was there. Like we saw Mixwell try to take a couple shots, but then they they needed to clear out this area. If is it a Vova who's playing on um Astra? Yeah. So I want to see because he's in the same position now. So same wall. The attackers are actually going to contest the wall. 
And you can see also how far up these two have pushed. So they can immediately give the information that the attackers are, uh, are going to be coming down here through Arcade. Mixwell has like no info here. Two walls, that was one of the other benefits of having the Sage. Oh my god, Vac! Vitality have honestly been doing such a good job so far in these first two rounds of just like finding good positions to use. I think having the two walls is definitely beneficial to them. So this is really, hold on a second. What the fuck has happened here? So all of the defenders, they've been given this false information. So they're all rotating. They're pushing up really aggressively here. Oh my God. Oh my God. And there's just no information because the cypher cam is over towards B as well. Vitality can set up this site perfectly. Again, using the uh, the double wall. I actually really like this double wall that they're going for because it just segments the site up so well. Easy plan. Now you've got Mixworld's going to have to deal with this tripwire. But that could also take some attention away from the fact that everyone else is rotating through CT. So we'll see how that goes. Yeah, he gets a kill. I think Brahms didn't necessarily need to play that far forward. This is going to be so hard. Because again, like the breach utility, but you've got someone standing on either side of that door as well. So Shadow, okay, Shadow got a kill, immediately traded out. I was going to say Shadow could have been in a position where he gets uh, kills there or where Vitality still have the advantage, but that was fine. Okay, so it's another eco for G2. They're finding themselves in this position quite a lot. <laughs> so yeah, okay, he's managed to tag out the Viper. How are G2 going to respond? Because one of the problems is G2 have been a bit overzealous with some of their rotates so far. So they're keeping a Vova on A, rotating everyone else over. Okay. G2 finally have an operator. <laughs> they finally, on round number eight, they've finally gotten to a point where they can afford an operator. Not full shields though, but they can afford an operator. Now the question here is like, what are they, like, are they going to flank? Are they going to stay on A? Are they going to go through CT? Because they know that there are people playing in T. They know there's going to be that tripwire, so they can't directly flank. And yeah, here we go. Okay, so it looks like Mixwell's going to be taking a position over on A so he can still hold the long angle, but they're going to be sending Hoodie over to help out on B. Vitality have been doing a lot of this poking and prodding where they try and tell G2 that they're moving towards a certain site and then sometimes they back off. So we can see Sender is still over a dish so he can hold on to A. That was nice from Nuke. That was really good because they have struggled to hold on to the B arcade at times. And this means that G2 can hold on to that side of the site and have a much stronger position to be dealing with these other players who are coming up from the south side of T. Vac has been playing really well, but that was a much better defended um, round, I think, from G2 because they had that support at the start of the game. Um, they actually used the information well. They didn't send everyone over on their rotate. They still held on to the other site so it couldn't be exploited. And, uh, you know, the way they, they dealt with what was happening in RK, the way that Nukie did that, I thought was very good because had he not gotten those kills, that absolutely would have been a vitality win. Get to keep the op. So this is actually like probably going to be the first time that G2 start to put money in the bank because they're not having to replenish what they've lost in a round because obviously had they lost the operator in that round that's like five thousand credits gone right so they can actually start to save a little bit i do like that they've changed what side they put their defending vipers pit on though because most of the vitality attacks have been from that north side also hoodie this is brave <laughs> I was like, okay, it's one thing to use the barrier orb to your advantage because we spoke a little bit earlier about how Vitality have done a great job at cutting um, the sites in half using both a Viper's Wall and the barrier orb in like the same space. So for him to be like, right, well, I'm not letting you cut off my line of sight. I'm going to have all of the line of sight, but like then be facing three players. That's so brave. I also want to point out as well is that this is the second time now that Vitality have used their Viper's Pit the same round that g2 have used theirs so it's it's like they get to a point where they uh feel they obviously have like an advantage because they they're 
they've picked a site they know that g2 have already used their vipers pit elsewhere and then they're using it against something that's like not necessarily got a counter now great g2 actually co completed uh or won that round so the vipers pit here we go. And this is actually a one versus three. Yeah, I wasn't even paying enough attention at this point. I was too busy talking. A one versus three here. Nuki has been having a really strong couple of rounds. And I think you can... I mean, that was... Re actually, so A, that was really unfortunate for, um, for Shadow, just because, like, the position that he was in was in a really good spot for Nuki. If there had been, like, a couple more millise uh, milliseconds, then they would have been able to get a crossfire onto Nuki and almost guaranteed killed him. But the really big thing with that as well is it just means that the res has been wasted. So that res that we spoke about at the beginning of the game of being such a valuable ult and something that G2 don't have themselves because they brought a, a an Astra instead of a Sage, that res is gone. It's gone. But the other thing I wanted to mention is like, this is a great clutch from Nukie anyway. And you can tell just by the position that he's in, where he knows there are players around him, that he has just like got this calm under pressure demeanor. You can tell, and I mean, Nuki has been on this squad for a while. He's quite an experienced player at this point, but you can just tell that he is staying calm in the way that he played that clutch. Don't you guys agree? Like, because I know if this were me, not that I'm a great comparison point, but I know that if this were me, I would be freaking the fuck out. First, you've got to go through the Viper's Pit, so you're going to be going down to, like, fucking nothing HP. Then you've got like this shit directly facing the enemy viper now you don't know what side of this fucking little pole <laughs> sender's gonna be on you know sender's there you know sender's there but you you don't know what side of the pole he's gonna be on and you know that you've got someone off to your right now you don't need to worry so much because the barrier orb is still up but you also likelihood is you know that they have res because someone's gonna be tracking the ult so you need to get rid of the other guy's sky quickly. You hear the res go off. While he's turning to shoot Shadow, that would be so easy for Sender. Oh, I say so easy, but like it would it'd be a huge opportunity for Sender to then take advantage of the fact that Nukie's back is to him. Immediately turns back, gets the fucking kill, and then lands it on Vak. And Vak has been a fucking machine in this game so far anyway. So Nukie is a beast. And the fact he dropped the gun to pick up the one in front of him, like... Like, I don't... I wish I had that kind of composure. <laughs> like, that is... that is peak composure, and I don't have that in any part of my life. <laughs> I'd never have thought to pick up that gun. I... yeah, I would have been, like, hitting R, because hitting R is, like, my tick in games anyway. I would have been hitting R... By the way, that is becoming a problem in League of Legends. <laughs> The more I play League of Legends and just waste my ult because I accidentally hit R is actually ridiculous. This is an interesting idea from Vitality here. So they've decided that they're going to commit to this upward defense where they're going to get quite aggressive. Um, I like that they're sending Nuki over so they're going to actually have four people coming in from here. They've also set up all their Cypher utility on the site here so they can actually still... They know that there is that risk that the attackers can come in through that. Now that might sound really obvious, but if you think back to some of the defensive rounds the G2 had, some of their problems were that they just left these avenues of ingress wide open. I really, I, I really quite like that. Um, because it's not it's not like complicated. It's not exactly super high skill ceiling or anything, but it, it just shows a vigilance, which uh I think there was a little bit lacking when G2 were doing the same thing. I could Press play, and in three seconds, we're looking at a very different game. I don't know, let's try. One, two, three. Well, I mean, straight up, we've got Cadavra, who's going to cause a problem here. But if he gets caught out here, I mean, there's a decent trade potential. Uh, on Actually, on both sides, I guess. I'm assuming the Sage is also in the tunnel with him. I fucking hate the minimap for this. Does anyone else have that with Fracture where the minimap just like hurts your brain? Um, <laughs> so I assume they're together. So there's trade potential on both sides and actually probably better on Vitality's side here. But the thing here is that I think if a Vova um, goes down, um, Hoodie is not going to be able to take on the A site himself. 
But if he can use his Aftershock or his Fault Line, I obviously don't know what he has available to him right now, but if he can use some of that utility straight through into here, then that's obviously going to give Avova like, the support that he needs to be able to, um, to, to take the Viper. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so this is great. So straight up, so they didn't actually even uh, like get the kill uh, onto the Viper on this side. It doesn't matter. They got two kills into the tunnel on the B site, leaving B basically entirely open. So let's let's see, because I'm I'm intrigued. Okay, so they do a Viper line up. He's still not forced out of his position, so they don't know he's there. Two kills. Oh my oh my god, I actually thought he was gonna get the third one. <laughs> Alright, so Meadow finally closed him off. Now, uh, again, on the site itself at that moment, because Shadow won't have seen Avova. I, you've also got to consider the neural theft has also just been popped, so they know where they are. We will see how aggressive Vitality play, because you can see Sender looks like he's about to step out. Because I was going to say, if they play a bit cautiously, just for a second or so, it's going to give Avova the time to get in position. There is always the risk that they can bring them down one by one because Avova isn't there yet. The crosshair placement is like, Meadow knows that Sender's going to be there. happen <laughs> so um yeah so that was what i was just saying is there's always the chance that because sender is playing aggressively he can get the kill onto meadow before avova has the chance to get in position and then they then they do it systematically this is how far we have on a plant right now and obviously on this this pause screen we can't see where avova is and if he's in a decent enough position to be able to support hoodie but the problem you have here is you've essentially got a one versus two because hoodie has to stay on the plant he could come off of it they have you know what they have a ton of time they have time to come off of it that may be what has to happen to to provide that support because if a vova gets picked off here hoodie is in a really hard position because it's either like i plant and know that i can just die while i'm planting or i'm just like in a one versus two anyway Okay, let's see what happens here. So he's he's still planting. Okay, so yeah, they've they've decided to keep doing that. Good shot as well because um, Sender actually had his crosshair in the exact right position, so that was just a faster reaction time. Now Brahms versus Avova. Who do we think is going to get this? Because Avova's going to have to really step out. Like he needs that line of sight. He hasn't got him caught in the gravity well. That was so tragic. Look at that. Look at that. He knows that he's not going to be able to see him before he can reach the spike. So Brahms gets there just fast enough and doesn't get sucked into the grab well. So Avova has to step out now. He has no choice and he doesn't know where Brahms is. That was really well played by Vitality there. Part of it was... Honestly, if Avova had been like one second further up like the, the map, that could have gone differently. Okay, so they've sent out the, we're going to be attacking B. Um, Viper's War. Oh! Uh, uh! <laughs> that, that stressed me out. <laughs> that tripwire is going to make life kind of hard for Mixwell and Avova here. They're going to have to ensure that they go in at the same time. So much defender utility as well. All of this Viper stuff just totally controlling the site. Like, Vitality have just got e everything. Oh, Cosmic Divide coming out as well. Okay, I... But, like, the Cosmic Divide comes out, but the spike is on the other side of it to where you want to be. The Cosmic Divide did come before the spike was dropped. Okay, that's a little bit more understandable. Because I was... I, it, they were happened so close. It was literally, like, within a second of each other. Because G2 were looking to really push in. There were still two Vitality players that were on the, the site side of the Cosmic Divide. Um, that they just didn't have information on. Like, they were always going to lose players in that. But the fact that they lost Hoodie and then the spike was on the other side of the Cosmic Divide is just like, that totally fell apart. If, if they manage to not kill Vac and Vac gets a res, that's really big. If they kill Vac, no res... G2 have a chance. Oh no, he looked. Oh, oh! Let's fucking go! So they can actually buy up now. This is big. Sender's just like, I'm gonna whip out the Odin. 
Oh my god, Sender is okay. Sender is just gonna like lock it down, I guess. On A, he's got like everything with him. He's got Odin in hand, tripwire and camera around him. He's fucking ready. He's a one man machine. All right, G2 getting kills. There's the rolling thunder. So instead of using it onto A, they actually use it to push back back. That's pretty good because back had this huge line of sight across the site, and also the fact that like it's back, right? Now he can't use the res. Now he can't get the kills that we know that Vac is capable of getting. Uh, and because they removed um, Sender before, they already had this route in. So that was actually a really nice coordination that they had there. So my prediction is Meadow gets caught out and this engagement goes to shit or whatever. Okay, Sender is sending it. Cage so he can only use one side. Okay, so it didn't totally go to shit, but Meadow's jumped down so he's not up uh up there anymore this is entirely on prompt they had no idea where he was better you had a camera and he's watching him the camera's moving okay so he knows what that was so bizarre okay so again in theory this should go to absolute shit for brahms because the second that he passes this cosmic divide The second he passes this cosmic divide, there is this direct crossfire that's being held. Like, he has to turn one way or the other. So whatever happens here, I'm like not ready for it because G2 should win this. What is going to go wrong? I'm actually scared. Okay, cosmic divide is down in the nebula. They're still holding the crossfire. Grav well doesn't actually pull Brahms in. This is not the first time that Brahms has successfully avoided a grav well, let me tell you that. Maybe he Ferrari peeks this. That's what, I mean, I assume actually now thinking about it, he can probably look around this nebula without actually showing himself to a hoodie. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess the fact that the cosmic divide went down meant that he actually didn't have to cross it. If that nebula had been a tiny bit over, and I'm just gonna like put this out there. There have been a few times in this game where a Vova's star placement has been the reason, it's been the difference between G2 like winning and losing I, um, um, a, a round. I don't know what the fuck Meadow was doing either. That like, Meadow knew that he was coming. I don't get it, dude. I don't get it. I do not get it. Unless unless he was like looking on the camera, happened to like look over Brahms and just miss him. But there's no way that's the case. He knew 